all right good morning guys welcome to another video this is chris signing in so it is tuesday i believe april 23rd uh just leaving my house we are in the little boat today just myself uh, i gotta work at 3 p.m so it's around 6 30 now uh, so i'm going to sprint out to some of our close-in wrecks in the seven to probably 12 mile range the ocean's supposed to be pretty nice i should be able to cover some ground fairly quick in the Maycraft. Uh, my buddies went out yesterday, they went a little north, said it was uh, a little slow, but Eric got his personal best 8.6 pound tog on a jig, so pretty cool. So today is gonna be my first time trying to use the new trolling motor, the Riptide Altera, so that'll be pretty cool. Um, we're gonna try using the spot lock or anchor lock um, functionality to that, and then we also got my new Brand new Hummingbird Helix 7, which is just kind of calibrating with the bottom right now. And um, we'll check back with you when you get out there, guys. Hopefully we can get a couple hours of action before work. Um, it always makes the work day a little bit better when you can start it off doing something fun. So we'll see. on the numbers I'm blocking out those numbers just for the interest of not giving away some spots and spot burning everybody now if I look back at my log this wreck just one year ago to the day Zach and I came out here and laid into them all I'm gonna do is just drive around real slow until I see that wreck pop up on my fish finder so there she starts right there okay so now once I get the troll motor powered up, all I need to do is get right over that wreck, hit the spot lock, and bingo, we're fishing. So you can see it rises up about 10, about 10 to 15 foot, all right? It's not a huge piece. From what I know, it's pretty old. So we're gonna swing back around, we'll get on that. Now what we'll do is we will power up our Riptide Altera troll motor. What I'm going to do is scroll down, hit the Altera, deploy. <laughs> Pretty neat. Now she's deploying. <laughs> okay, so. There's the start of it right there. I'm gonna go a little further. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the iPilot link. So you can see now I'm in the anchor lock or iPilot lock system. You can see it engaging right now. Really cool. And that should keep me right over this rack. No anchoring, no nothing. It's nice enough, I should be able to do this. So we'll see. I'm six feet away from where I started. And I am still right over a good structure. All right, so let's see. All right, I just have a regular, regular old bottom fishing set up on this one. I have a jig already set up too, but I'm gonna start off with old school and then we will go from there. Simple 4-0, Kamagatsu. Okay, so, okay, feed that on there. Like so. Got a bunch of weights from the big boat. Probably start with a four. See how that goes. We're coming off the full moon here. Um, so the currents may be still a little strong. So we'll find out. All right, so all you gotta do with the green crab, cut them right in half. A lot of guys cut the legs off and the claws. I don't do that. I actually just put them on half, just like that. Okay, you wanna go in the meat and then out one of the sockets. And that's it. Once so a while you rip the shell off. I would imagine be off this side here. And that's it, guys. Let's drop down and see if anybody's home. 
And so far, just a couple scratchy little bites there. Nothing major. Um, sometimes these tog, it takes them a little while to, takes a little while for a, a spot to kind of get going. So for me, I give it 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes to see if they won't activate. There was a good bite. That was a good bite there. Sometimes, you know, they'll, they'll start getting the smell of your crabs and then they'll they'll open they'll start waking up but that was a that was a pretty good bite that felt like a tog bite so there's somebody home so we'll see let's try and get right back in that little hole we were just in we are still over structure that is so cool look at that riptide doing its thing baby that is so neat now i don't think i could do this on a rough day but today it's not going well it's beautiful out here it's gonna be tough to leave and go to work there we go there we go that's a tog there he is hey buddy there you go guys it's a tog pretty neat these guys are members of the Rass family. They're really neat. Look at those teeth. They're like little people teeth, almost. See them? Really cool. Let that pretty one go. Bye-bye, baby. There she goes. All right, guys. So maybe we're starting to, starting to wake up here. That one hit pretty good pretty good so let's see so the limit is four fish at 15 inches I honestly haven't decided if I'm gonna even keep any or not oh ho, 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 ho. so I'm gonna miss there we go there we go that's a good one that's a better one That's a better one. There we go. That's a good one, guys. That's a nice keeper. That one bit real good. It's probably just about 15. No, it's not, huh? It's really not. Okay, okay. Is that close? He goes back. Bye bye, baby. All right. They're here, just not. I think there's smaller fish here. We may want to make a move here, kids. But, you know, they're starting to get more active. Each time I put the bait down there, the bites are coming sooner and sooner. So we'll see. We can always move around a little bit on the rack. That one really fought. Man, he fought good. That's a little guy. Come here, you little devil. Get in here, look at you. A little baby guy. Bye bye, baby. They're here, guys. They're just smaller. I mean, I got them. Oh, look at that. Hey, buddy. Sea bass. Check him out. Uh, the black sea bass. Got pretty. Bye bye, baby. Get down there. Somewhat decent. It's a little better. Fat. Look how fat you are, buddy. You are fatty, huh? You 
going back. Bye bye, baby. Get down there. So I don't mess around, guys. As you can see, if they're if they're real close on these togs specifically, only because they're not my favorite fish to eat. They're all really good. I let them go. You know, I'm not starving. If you're out here catching your meal, you probably shouldn't be out here. Oh, he popped me off, sucker. It's hard to leave here, guys. They're here. It's just, they're just small, I don't know. I don't really want to see some bigger ones. I mean, sometimes those bigger ones will turn right on too, yo. Know? I don't know. I don't know. One or two more drops. See what happens. This is a better one. This is definitely a better one. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Now you're talking. Now we're talking. That's a toggart. That way, chin. There we go. Now we're talking, guys. Now we're talking. That's a proper tog. Look how pretty this mouth. You can see they got those human-like teeth almost. But that's a keeper. You can see these teeth, these human teeth. They use that to pick at crustaceans and mussels and barnacles. You can see that one was right in the wreck. It's got that really neat rust color to them. Pretty fish. That one's going to come home for dinner, all right? You'll see that too. Sometimes the bigger ones out of nowhere just turn on. So we'll see. Again, that's by no means a trophy sized fish or anything, but. Beat sleeping. That'll be Tog Tacos tomorrow night. There we go, guys. There we go. I think they're starting to wake up here. That's a good one. That, there's a good one, guys. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking, baby. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. That's a good one. That's a good one, guys. Oh, yeah. Look at that one. Ho, 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 ho. Now we're talking. Now we're talking, guys. Now we're talking. That's a tog. All right. See what I say? The big ones, sometimes they just take a while and they you know they see one getting all excited and they you know then they're like oh what's going on over there that there's that's a good one that's a real real chubby one look how chubby look at this beautiful ocean guys this is absolutely awesome i gotta work at 3 p.m i'm gonna go in with a nice smile on my face <laughs> uh, cut his gills get him I'm going. Okay, so all I gotta do is cut his gills right there, and they'll bleed a little bit. Just makes the meat a lot whiter, flakier. Now, again, guys, none of this is gonna get wasted. All right, I may or may not keep my limit. I honestly don't really know. So I'm gonna put these here so they don't flop out. Um, I really don't even know if I'm gonna keep my limit. I don't, you know. I don't like to keep too many fish. So he bit. He kind of actually. So that was cool. So that one thumped it a little bit. And then I just felt it go weightless. So he actually did what a lot of the bigger ones do. And what I love when they do. So he actually picked that bait and the weight right off the bottom. And um. I knew that was a decent one the second I set the hook. The bigger ones will do that, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna try a jig. So this is a, I believe a two ounce jig. You know, the current's light enough. Let me give this a go, just real quick. I have a two ounce jig here. Let's see, let's just see. 
on my 4500 spin fisher matching pen rod it's gonna be definitely a little lighter oh yeah on the jig baby on the jig <laughs> first drop it's, it's not even fighting that's what i got i foul hooked him look at that <laughs> For some reason these jigs i foul hook a lot of fish i don't know why come on baby i'm not sure why that happens good point here guys so when we got here it was really kind of pretty slow right and now it's like the second i drop down bingo we're bit um it just goes to show you sometimes you know you need these spots to just kind of quote make up you know they get the scent of the crabs you're dropping down they see the other ones getting all excited on the hook and it'll you know the spot just kind of makes up sometimes it takes 10 minutes sometimes it takes an hour um but you know that's why you don't just leave a spot right away i was just about to leave here because it was mostly smaller fish and oh that was a good bite and then you know out of nowhere bam right back to back two keepers so let's see so now i got a two ounce sns bucktail this is the green crab color uh out here i like to use two ounces on this when you're in the back bays and stuff and you're the bridges you can get away with heck half three quarter one ounce so with the jig again you come in the body and out of socket and what they say is with this flat bottom here that rests kind of like that and you can see then they don't see the jig and they just see the the um, legs jeez I'm drawing a blank I'm so excited they draw you know the legs just kind of hang up like that and they just see the crab these green crabs don't swim you know their natural mode of you know ambulation is not to swim they kind of crawl along the rocks and along the bottom so these tog, you know, they want to see it sitting as close to that wreck as possible because that's what a crab would do naturally, at least a, a green crab. Um, so that's the hypothesis. Uh, I find I've only had success in 70 foot or less, but I'm also not a patient person, so I haven't given them all that much of a try out here on the wrecks. In the back, I use them all the time. Um, You snag a lot too, at least out here, in my opinion, or in my experience, I should say. The other thing too, guys, I'll mention is see how all that, the eggs in there, that orange. Those are the green crabs that you want, at least in my experience. They absolutely love when they're orange like that. I don't know if it's the scent of the eggs or if it's the color, but man. That's what I look after. That's what I look for. There we go. There we go on the jig, baby. Look at that rod bend. Look at that rod bend. That is cool. That is really cool. On the jig. I think I foul hooked this one too. I did, look. See? I'm not sure why that happens like that. Hmm. Not so sure I'm a fan of that. I don't want, I don't want these guys getting hurt. If I'm not killing them to eat them, I don't want to hurt them. You know, something to monitor. Maybe I need to set the hook sooner. I don't know. All right, guys, back to old school. I am definitely an old school kind of guy. The jig was getting some bites, but regular old bottom rig was definitely doing better. So, back to it. I knew that was a little one playing with it. That's a little guy. Ain't that little. Let's get a measurement. That was 15. Right on the dot. 
And I actually like the smaller ones to eat, so I'm gonna keep him. That one we're gonna keep. Yeah, he's 15. I'm gonna keep that one. How pretty. Sorry, girl. But we're gonna eat ya. Come here, I'm gonna eat ya. Really rare you get a super nice day like this, guys. Again, you can see the the eye pilot doing its thing. It's using satellites and its internal GPS to keep me right over the spot that I selected, which in this case is, is this wreck. Super cool. No need to anchor. Which I've gotten pretty good at, but it can be a pain. Um, I would imagine this wouldn't work on a real windy, rough day. I would think if it was too rough, the prop would be busting out of the water and whatnot. Um, but on a day like this, it's perfect. And I don't come out here on my little boat unless it's just like this. If it's anything not like this, I'll, I'll just turn right around. And the big boat's a little different. Um, but man, what a beautiful ocean, guys. I am so excited. In the Maycraft, all by myself, having a good time. Gotta love it. I like fishing by myself. All right, guys. So the bites, the bite at this spot's mellowing. Uh, you know, I don't know if I just kind of pounded it for too long, but I think what I'm going to do. There's another wreck that's really close by, similar depth. Let me go check that out. So, so what we're going to do here is bring in. So let's take the spot lock off. Okay. So now my prop isn't moving. That's that middle circle. So now we'll go to the Altera. And then all we gotta do, it should be bring up the shaft. How oh, neat, all with the push of a button, guys. How cool is that? And this is my first day using it. Now we'll hit the stow button. <laughs> and that's it, we're ready to roll. And now what I'll do is to save some batteries, I'll turn the power off. Then what I'll do is I'll turn the power off on the remote, save some batteries there. Perfect. And then, now instead of, so now instead of having to retrieve an anchor, either with a ball, you know, retrieval system, or, you know, the windlass, which can take a little while, boom, I'm off and running. And I'm right to my next wreck. How cool is that? So let's see, the next wreck is gonna be only two miles to the northeast so I can be there in no time and I can you know drop that trolling motor see if there's life if there's not bring the trolling motor up it takes 30 seconds bam I could push a little south to you know an artificial reef that's right there okay we're at the second spot here so we're just spinning around after I engage the the eye lock and you can see there, so we're, it's actually deeper than I thought. We're in about 90 foot of water. You can see the wreck coming up from there. It's not as high profile as that other one. Um, so we'll see. I've caught tog here before. It is a little deeper. I do like to go kind of in 10 foot increments when I'm tog fishing, you know, deeper or shallower. But uh, again, it's so easy to just deploy that and hit a button and dropping and, you know, bringing in an anchor. There you go. Okay, somebody's home. All right. All right. I love the way these guys fight. This may not be a bad one, to be honest with you. Yeah, there you go. Let's see. I think that might be our limit, guys. Yep. 15 and change. So that's our limit, 
but I think I'm gonna hold out for a bigger one. Try and get one bigger one. They don't call them slippery bass for nothing. Okay, bye bye, baby. All right, guys, on to the third wreck. Um, for some reason, that that wreck, you know, I pulled right up, caught a tog right away, had a couple more bites, and then that that kind of was it. Um, and that was deeper. That, that was 90 foot of water, whereas the other one was in 70. So I'm gonna go back into that kind of same depth range to another wreck that's that's right here. Um, if this isn't on, then I may go right back to the first wreck I was at. I mean, they were there. Um, we have our limit. I let the fourth keeper go. Uh, I'm hoping for a bigger one. Um, if not, I won't be upset. That's plenty of meat for me and my wife. Uh, and that's it. So we'll see. Let's see what this next wreck looks like. Uh, I flounder fished this wreck. I haven't tog fished it yet, so we'll see. So this is the third wreck. This is in 65 feet of water. The structure comes up to about 55, 57 feet. So <clears throat> let's see if there's toggers here. We'll see. There we go, guys. That one hit as soon as it hit the bottom. That feels like a decent one, too. Oh, yeah. Certainly a keeper. It's a nice one. Yeah, we'll keep that one. That's a good one. We'll keep that one. Nice and fat. Uh, not even that big, really. Just about 16 inches. It's actually, you know what? That's actually perfect eating size. Let's go ahead and eat that one. So now, from here on out, and we get big. Gonna get a quick hello. All right, guys. It's just about 10 a.m. We started probably around 7 a.m. And uh, that is our tog limit. That one nailed it. That one was just like, got to the bottom and boom. He was on there. I didn't even really set the hook. He was just on. So that's it. Tog limit. Probably fish another hour maybe. Go in and go to work. <laughs> go to work with a grin on my face. There's another one. Oh, that one's even better. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. I think there's a sea bass. Now, <laughs> foul hooked togger. <laughs> Little one. So these fish are definitely pushing shallower. So, you know, we start off in 70 foot. Then we went a little bit deeper, 85, 90 foot. It was definitely slower there. And now we're even shallower. Um, and this spot seems to be really, really pretty loaded. Um, look, I got another one. I just put it down and I got another one. I literally just dropped my bait right back down. That's three fish in a matter of, I don't know, a minute and a half, two minutes. So they're definitely pushing west. So the, the way that these tog, you know, work is in the spring, they, they winter further offshore, you know, 150 foot plus, 200 foot depths. Now, some of the bigger fish I have read and heard will just stay on a particular wreck, and that's kind of their home. Uh, but in the spring, you want to work deep to shallow. So right now, I'm only in 65 foot of water, so they're, they're really starting to make their push, um, you know, west. So uh, I like to go in about 10 to 15 foot increments, you know, start deep, go shallow, or start shallow, go deep. In the fall, it's the opposite. They're going to go from west to east. So then you'll start shallow and work deep until you know you know what depth they're holding um what's also good is to have intel from your friends your local bait shops the charter boats if they're doing any sort of reports just you know you don't need to know what wreck they're fishing they're not going to tell you anyway but if you can find a, a similar depth wreck that they're fishing or reef you know you, you should have success so uh, i'm going to keep fishing here because it's super fun Yeah. 
Bye bye, baby. Let's see if I'm waiting on one one big one here. Probably got about 30 minutes to fish, maybe an hour. We'll see. They're still biting pretty good. At this point, it's pretty much drop it down and you get bit. Um, I feel like there's a lot of sea bass here. I can feel them. A little bit different bite. That's a tog. Oh, that was a tog. <laughs> that was a tog bite, though, for sure. So they're still here. So, guys, today it's Tuesday. I think it's, yeah, it's Tuesday. Today's Tuesday. I have to work today 3P to 1A. Then I'm off Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If I can get a good satellite shot from today, and I should be able to, it's beautiful out. And I still see this eddy I've been following that's near the Hudson and the Toms Canyon. Oh, there's a fish. We're going tuna fishing Thursday. As long as the weather holds up. We'll see. I've never killed a tuna in April. Something I've always wanted to do. So we'll see. Another tog. Come on, baby. I'll get you off. I love fishing guys. I, I just love it. I could do this all day, every day. One of the biggest mistakes I see beginner tog fishermen and women make is don't don't leave your bait down there that long. If you if you get bit and right away within the next couple seconds you don't feel any more taps or anything like that, you probably got robbed. So you know bring them in check your baits be active don't just sit there or you're not going to catch anything also what i do i bring tons of crabs you know i think it's very important to just always have a fresh crab on there even if you, you know you bring it in after a drop and you still have bait you know they get washed out and they lose the scent and all that they lose the eggs so i buy tons of crabs and i'm not frugal about using them um that's important in my opinion Guys, what I'm using today is a custom rod from JPR. You can see, I don't know if you can see that, it's pretty neat. It's got the Reaper logo on there. My buddy Zach added a TOG, uh, black and silver. Uh, this is from the, I forget, he, I think he said the blank was like almost 10 feet long or something like that. It's the honey llama glass blank um, that's really pretty popular in the TOG community. Um, and then he just cut it down. Uh, a little bit shorter for me. I think this one's like seven foot, seven, six, seven, nine, somewhere in that range. And I really like it. It's got the spiral wrap. Um, I needed something to just pull some bigger fish out of the deeper wrecks. So I, I had uh, Paul from JPR make this up for me. And again, I got a Avet SJX 5.3. And this, this combo, it's really light. It's got tons of power. I really liked it so far. Well, guys, I'd say for my first trip with the new Minkota trolling motor and the new Humminbird Helix 7, I'd say the first trip is an absolute success. The, the new Humminbird reads the bottom very well. The GPS is super easy to use, uh, chart plotter rather, really easy to use. Um, the trolling motor, that, that's just so neat. But not only that, it's, it's really easy to, to operate. Um, I read through the manual, you know, as best I could, but uh, obviously didn't get all the details, but it, it's so intuitive, really. Um, just so cool. Probably one of the best purchases I've made for fishing probably ever. It's, it just changes the whole ball game on my little boat. So uh, I have no regret so far. The thing's awesome. So what I did for the troll motor was I, I bought two dedicated big deep cycle batteries. Um, I have them underneath the console there. So they just run the trolling motor. I bought a battery charger as well. So as soon as I get back to the dock, I just plug it right into the AC current back at my dock and then that'll charge just fine and keep them charged. Um, and it was really pretty easy to install myself. It wasn't, it wasn't hard. Another foul hook to go. 
guy. It'll be fine though. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up today. It's probably getting close to noon, and again, I got to go to work. Um, but I'm so pumped. You know, I, I th had thought about just going in the back bay um, and fishing the sod banks for tog. I know that there have been some fish caught in closer, but, you know, the weather forecast looked great. They were actually right for once. It's absolutely beautiful out here. Um, and I wanted to get out on my little boat and, and try out the new trolling motor system. Uh, again, I only had a few hours. I, I wanted to go solo. Um, just because of the time constraints and I would not have been able to squeeze this much fishing time into this uh, You know little bit of a half a day had I not had the trolling motor um, you know to Go ahead and, and get on top of the wrecks and then deploy the anchor Drop back get over the wreck stay on the wreck. I, I just think to do it myself on the little boat. It's feasible I've done it before um, It's impossible on the big boat even with a windlass, at least in my opinion, uh, to do it safely. But uh, I have done it in the past on my little boat, but um, specifically today, not having that much time to fish, all the time I saved with, with deploying the anchor, bringing the banker up while I moved to different spots, I was able to really spend more time with baits in the water. And that was, uh, that was crucial today. I don't know how many tog we caught. We caught tons. Um, I had five keepers. Um, got my limit, you know, a couple others were probably keepers that I threw back. I didn't even measure them. Nothing huge, but hey, I'll take it. Um, so again, hopefully Thursday we're going to get offshore and do some tuna fishing. If not, I'll probably be out here on the big boat doing togging again. Um, and we'll go from there, guys. So this is Chris from Reaper Fishing, New Jersey, signing out. Uh, and again, guys, if you, if you like the videos, hit the like button, subscribe, share. We're right around 420... Um, subscribers when i hit 500 i'm going to be giving away that uh gps fish finder that you saw in the last video so um stand by guys more videos coming and and for those of you that have been watching and digging the channel i really appreciate it guys um this is my passion this is what i love to do so we'll see you this is chris signing out bye bye